Hello, and welcome back to the Conscious Wealth Podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to be diving into the masculine and the feminine energies and the role that they both play in wealth creation. And this topic is particularly fascinating to me because as humans, we tend to have bias towards one side or the other, or have at least tendencies heavily in one side or the other. And I rarely come across a person who is pretty balanced in this area, at least when it comes to wealth. And so kind of my, my why for today's episode and why I want to share this is mainly because most people I see, whether that's in my uh, private community, the Level Up Collective, or my friend groups, or the public, you know, Instagram community and different areas where I have a presence, I pay attention. I'm always paying attention. And I just see a ton of heavy imbalance here. And I might not go the direction you think I'm going to go in this episode, so I would definitely encourage you to stick around, hear me out, and, uh, you know, I think you might find that what I'm speaking to really resonates with you. So particularly, I've noticed that very few people have mastered both sides of the coin here, and I want to see everyone win. And the last thing I'll say before I get into it is... I am by no means saying that I've mastered both sides of the coin. Life is a journey. It is a dance. It's not a destination, right? So, you know, some seasons of my life, the pendulum swings from one side to the other. Some seasons I feel very aligned. Some seasons like right now, I feel very unaligned and have been going through all sorts of shit. So that's the human experience. Right, So I just wanted to speak to that before I get into this. I'm never speaking from a pedestal. I'm speaking from experience, from a place of, yo, I know what it's like because I go through it too. So I think it'll be helpful if I share uh, first off that when I say masculine and feminine energies, for anyone who's not familiar with you know the spiritual work and such, I'm not referring to a man and a woman. I'm referring to energy characteristics. So Masculine energy is typically thought of as structure, form, action taking, discipline, willpower. Um, you know, it's the doing. And then the feminine energy is the opposite. So, the feminine energy is more about the playing and the being. The feminine energy is not structured, it's more fluid. Um, it doesn't like, uh, routine and borders and all of that. It's more of the ethereal, intangible, energetic side of things. And both are extremely important. And as a matter of fact, feminine energy is what gives life. There's a reason that women are the ones who have children. There's a reason that we call earth mother earth, not father earth earth. There's a reason for that. And that's an extremely powerful and important energy, which is that of birth and creation. And then there's a reason that the father figure is typically thought of as very important in uh, realms of discipline and structure, right? Um, Outside of the whole sexism arguments, there is merit to this in an energetic sense. So I'm going to be tying it into wealth. Uh, I just wanted to explain that aspect of things. And uh, next, I want to dive a little bit into my journey. And, you know, most of you probably know a good amount of my journey because I've talked about it. But um, I'm going to talk about some different aspects of my journey. So let's go back to when I was about 20. That is when my spiritual and entrepreneurial journey started. For me, the entrepreneurship path 
the wealth path, the personal development path has always been synonymous with the um, spiritual path. So there isn't much of a difference for me uh, in the wealth journey and the spiritual journey. So when I started around 20, I spent the next four to five years being heavily in my feminine energy when it came to wealth creation. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when I was 20, I was introduced to the secret. I was introduced to the law of attraction. I was introduced to the laws of the universe. And I was introduced to all sorts of these different kind of metaphysical concepts, if you will. And this changed everything for me because up until that point, I kind of viewed life as like, you know, you just, you just work hard and hopefully things work out <laughs> and, uh, things weren't working out for me. And so this was an excellent opportunity to reevaluate my paradigm, reevaluate my belief systems and make some changes. And so I really focused on for years and years and years, these feminine practices and, really getting super clear on what my ideal life looked like, getting extremely clear on what kind of man I was showing up as in the future, but trying to make that feel real now, getting extremely clear on what kind of life I was leading and how I was serving others and what amount of money I had and what investments I had and what level of cash flow I had and what it all felt like and what it all meant to me et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are the feminine aspects of manifestation. And for me, I had to spend years and years and years doing this because I was just so hyper masculine before I came across this stuff that I had a lot of unlearning to do. And so I spent years going through the feminine side of things. And then was finally able to evolve into a more balanced approach because I started off hyper masculine, trying to just do, 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 achieve, thinking that that was the way. And then the pendulum kind of swung and I was heavily focused on manifestation every single morning for years and years and years. I would not miss a day visualization of my ideal life. What car am I driving? The mansion I'm pulling up to the view from our estate. I'm talking in detail, the woman that's sitting next to me, what does she look like? What does the environment smell like? What, what do I feel like? Just incredible detail, the visualization exercises, the journaling prompts that I would do over and over and over and over and over and over. I did this. And many of you know this story I've posted on, on my uh, IG stories before, uh, showing you guys actual journaling prompts. And I started this in 2013. Um, most of the ones that I've shown take place between 2015 and 2017. But like I said, I started this in 2013. And I'm filming this right now in 2022. That's nine years. That's nine years before a lot of this would come to fruition. And so what I'm really speaking to here is I get it. I had, I had to focus so heavily for so long on the feminine aspects of wealth creation that I kind of got stuck in that and things didn't really change for me until I kind of realized I was eventually started to use I started to use the manifestation stuff and the spiritual principles as a form of bypassing. I, it, it's kind of like the saying, too much of a good thing is no longer a good thing. It's exactly like that. My ego and my mind attached to this notion that, you know, my approach was better than everyone else's because they were trying to work hard and I'm just sitting here meditating and it's all going to come to me. And I had to eventually realize that that was toxic. And obviously I'm exaggerating. I was working as well, uh, not a job, but I'm just saying I was working towards my goals. 
which were uh, business related, wealth related, impact related, just all around lifestyle related. However, I had to get real with myself at some point in time and realize that like, yo, the reason that you're not where you want to be is not because you're not clear on where you want to be anymore. (laughs) You're super clear and you've upgraded your beliefs a shitload and you've made all of these changes internally. However, you haven't dragged those from the more ethereal feminine 5d internal realm, if you will, dragged those and grounded them and crystallized them and acted them out in the world. You haven't done that part efficiently or sufficiently enough. I was trying, but I was playing myself. I was kidding myself. I wasn't putting that level of due diligence in to my craft. I wasn't good enough. I didn't have the skills I needed to have for that lifestyle. I've had ridiculous goals since I was a teenager and that's awesome. But the thing about ridiculous goals is that you have to ground them in reality and realize that if you want something that 0.000001% of people will ever get to experience, then you're going to have to be better than 0.00001% of people are in some area. And you're going to have to find that area. And you're going to have to build a business around that area or a strategy around that area or a lifestyle around that area or a movement around that area or whatever it is. And so for me, my journey really had to pivot from focusing so much on the feminine to focusing so much on or focusing a lot more on grounding that feminine, not in an unhealthy masculine where I'm trying to do, do, do constantly and deriving my sense of self from that, but coming from kind of a full circle place where the pendulum had swung from toxic masculinity to femininity is the answer and just surrender and, you know, it'll all come to you and then coming full circle like, no, 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 neither of those is the full picture. It's it's more of a multi- tiered approach. And that's kind of what I want to talk about here. So that's my story. But let me make this relevant for you guys and explain kind of, you know, give you more clarity on like why I'm making this episode. So here are what I believe to be the most important metaphysical principles in experiencing whatever it is you ever desire in the third dimension in the physical realm. First, You have to have the feminine. We start with the feminine. How does it work? You have to go to a place where time and space don't exist. We call this the gap. Usually people access this through meditation, but technically you could access it anytime your brain is in the right states. Theta and alpha, potentially delta or gamma but not the waking state beta. So step one is you go to this place through, let's say meditation or an epic experience that shifts your state. And in this place, you have access to everything that has ever and will ever exist. Every idea, Every thought, every feeling, every record of everything. Some refer to this as the Akashic records. You can just think of it as once you're outside of the limitations of the third dimension, and this is kind of the point of meditating, uh, at least it's one of the one of the points, in my opinion. Once you're outside of that realm, you now have access beyond your limitations to everything, everything. And so in this realm, it's a really important step here because once you're in this realm, this is where you get downloads. This is where you can have, you can be shown visions. This is where you can be shown what it is that you are to do. That idea that will change everything for your lineage. So step one and the more feminine aspect of wealth creation 
is that surrender peace and that connecting with all that is beyond time and space peace. And so you have an entire industry. I shouldn't even say industry. It's bigger than that. You have entire cultures that are geared around masculine, doing, achieving, work harder, sleep less, complain less, get it done mentality. And it's hilarious to me and a little sad because you will never, ever, ever outwork what the creator has deemed for you. It's so arrogant and naive of us to even think that that's the way. I thought that that was the way too early on. So you have this one camp of person or this camp of people whom are trying to work, 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 work. And eventually, eventually with all my hard work, it'll pay off. Things will change for me, right? So that's your typical person in a dead-end minimum wage job. That's your typical person who's maybe pushing themselves athletically or whatever it may be. Or just trying every single thing sacrifice, discipline. They think that it has to just be full of suffering. And that's missing the boat. But then you have people on the other side who only do this first part, who only tap into this realm over and over and over. And then they, they get used to it being a form of bypass. Oh, it's all going to come to me. And they don't get up and go act that out in the world. So let's move on to step two so I can kind of speak to that. So it's equally important to sit your ass down in a chair and consistently learn to tap into these states effectively. Everything you've ever desired is there. It's all there. And it's going to be really hard for abundance and wealth to come to you in any magnitude if you don't access the place where all the wealth is. People think that wealth is out in the world. People think that wealth is in the hands of someone else. Just They just have to encounter that one person. I just need to meet the right connection. I just need the right business opportunity. I just need the right person to see it in me. That's an illusion. It's a mirage. You're the one with all the wealth. And the reason you're the one with all the wealth is because your creator is the one with all the wealth. And he's gifted us infinite access to that. But we live in a world where we'd rather go chase some bullshit for 80 years, just chase our tail, thinking that if we work hard enough, eventually we'll find the pot of gold. <laughs> when it was inside us all along, every spiritual text speaks to this. Every single one. We know that wealth is an inside job, but I think a lot of times people think that that's a cliche thing. Like we're talking more about like being content even though you're broke. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm a capitalist. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm financially free at age 29. I have an incredibly lucrative business, many streams of income, investments. And I'm telling you that this is extremely practical. That's a really important step, a step that most of America and the first world misses. They think they can just skip that part. But then you also have the whole woke community. And this is many of the members of my community. I observe and I see the massive limiting beliefs. I see like People just don't have the level of work ethic. And this is, I see this in my community. I see this in my friend group with uh, my more spiritual friend group. And I also see this in just in general on, on different social media channels where I have a presence and I have communities publicly. And I see it over and over. The, the archetype here is your your spiritual person who has kind of uh, gotten so familiar and uh, normalized the spiritual ways of living, which I have too. I'm, I'm one of you, you know, 
the meditation and the grounding practices and the connection, connecting to a higher power and getting out of your head. And it can be very easy to learn to live this way. But the thing is, is that we're still in a meat suit. And I think some of us are learning in 2022 based on the conversations I've had. I think some of us are learning just how much we were actually bypassing by under the guise of I'm spiritual. And I'll just speak for myself in saying like, it doesn't do the world any good if you have all this wealth within you. And I don't mean material. I mean, if you have all the answers, but you're so damn broke, the world will never know who you are. I think a lot of us are learning this lesson that the human experience is called the human experience for a reason. I spent so many years trying to stay in my higher, my higher chakras and access higher realms and stay in higher states just to realize, damn, I was just bypassing. It took me a good five years to come full circle and realize, fuck, I'm going to have to accept that I'm a fucking human, that I have flesh, that I have an ego and a lower self and I'm an animal and there's parts about me that are hard to accept, etc. And I think that a lot in the spiritual community, we see this taken out on money. We hear things like money is the root of all evil and You know, we see, I see it's a very common belief uh, in the spiritual space, for example. Why do you charge for your services if you're here to help this, you know, this type of money mindset? And it's just crippling. If, If that's the mindset that we have, we're never going to actualize wealth. And if you think that money is the root of all evil, then your unconscious and subconscious mind is going to do everything it can to ensure that you don't become or attract that because you, will, you don't want to be evil. So money, bad. Let's avoid that. So consciously, you're going to try, you're going to try, you're going to try, but it's just not going to come. You love struggle in a sadistic, unconscious way. And so I agree with you guys, the capitalists, the what let's call it toxic capitalism, because I genuinely and truly and economically believe that capitalism is the best system we've ever come up with. I'm not saying it's not flawed at all. I'm just saying it's better than communism, fascism, etc. <laughs> if you study history. So On the one side, we have toxic capitalists who only care about money and just want to focus on the the 3D world, what they can see in front of them, work harder, achieve, etc. And that ain't it. That's just the masculine. That's trauma. That's an unhealthy, unhealed wound around the feminine. And we have that as a society. But then also we have a massive amount and for a continually growing spiritual community, right? A massive amount of people. I'm meeting more and more and more. It's inspiring. People are waking up. We're doing it. The great awakening, right? It's happening. But with that, I'm seeing so much distortion. There's so much distortion around my brothers and sisters, probably many of you listening to this, around money. Money is just an amplifier. It's just a catalyst. So the same way that doing and achieving and forcing and grinding, that ain't the way. The way is also not just sitting in lotus position and manifesting and being so at peace that you you genuinely convince yourself of delusions. And I did this for years. At some point, we have to ground into the 3D. 
You chose this life, my friend. We chose to come here. We chose to incarnate with the parents that we did, with the upbringing that we did, with the experiences that we've had. We chose all of this. And maybe you've never had an experience to where you've realized what I just said. But when you die, you're going to see what I mean. I've already died before, which is why I know this. We chose to be humans, and part of being human is money. So by denouncing that money is the root of all evil, and ugh, it's sickening, capitalism, gross. Everything should just be free, and let's just roll around in the grass and drink kombucha. I get the anger and the, the repressed emotions and the, the desire to rebel against the system. I agree. Fuck the system. That's what I do for a living. <laughs> That's what my whole brand is based on. Helping people break free of these unfair, manipulative, and corrupt systems. I agree. But also, I, I can't shake this feeling of sadness that I've finally ranked up to be able to have a seat at some of these tables in a monetary sense, in an influence sense, in an opportunities presented to me sense. And when I'm sitting at these tables, there's not a single spiritual, woke person at these tables, in these conversations. And you know why? Because life simply manifests our, deep, our deepest unconscious beliefs. I'm going to say that again. Life only actualizes that which we believe most deeply to be true. And so if we think that money is bad, that money makes you greedy, that if you have more than you need, you're a bad person, you're never, ever going to have more than you need. And that's not good. Because you know who doesn't have those beliefs? People who wouldn't think twice about killing, genocide, manipulation, corruption, oppression. They don't think that. And they're sitting at these tables making these decisions. And I just think that this whole new age, new earth thing isn't grounded in enough practicality. How many of my woke brothers and sisters that are ushering in the new earth are financially free? I haven't really met any. Literally. I could think of two that I've met personally. So like, it's all great to say that, but the real way that these systems are going to change is if we have to infiltrate them and have enough money, aka voting power, and influence to be able to make a change. You have to be able to put your money where your mouth is. You have to afford to build new things. Infrastructure, communities, organizations, nonprofits, systems, technology, even monetary systems, forms of, you name it, businesses, communities, enterprises. But we're not thinking like that. And I know this is kind of a, somewhat of a, of a riff here off of our main topic of masculine and feminine, but I just want to clarify that it's completely related because we have most of the 
business-oriented, capitalistic world focusing on doing, 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 and that's not the best thing. And we know that. Pretty much anyone listening to this is probably going to be more on the spiritual side. So speaking more to you guys and old me, meaning like before some of these lessons kind of crystallized for me, if we're only focusing on the feminine side and we're just like, I just, I trust that it will happen if it's meant to and when it's meant to, and I won't force anything. And I agree. Those are, those are healthy things and I'm not recommending anything is forced. And yes, expectations, they cause suffering. And yeah, I know I get it all. I agree. But If 50% of the equation of manifesting wealth is the feminine aspect of sitting down, accessing all that is, receiving the knowledge, the other 50% is taking that seed that you just gained from a realm beyond limitation, time and space, right? Accessing all that is. Because when we get ideas, they're not ours. They already existed. You were just chosen to actualize it. If that's the first 50%, the other 50% is taking that seed, bringing it back with you through, a, I picture like through a vortex, like you were in the 5D. Now you're back into the 3D. You come back into your meat suit and you take that and you do whatever it takes to actualize that in the world. That becomes your mission. And that does require a lot of masculine. That requires discipline, that requires willpower, that requires consistency, that requires sacrifice, that requires energetic boundaries, that requires perseverance, that requires a fiery, pitta-like energy. And I unfortunately feel that a lot of my spiritual brothers and sisters are under the spell of some of these toxic beliefs that we all learned with the whole new age movement. Things like if it's meant for me, it will be that that's cool. But, and I used to focus on that too, because it really helps with mental health when your life just looks like shit. It really helps. Just surrender, just surrender Don't put any expectations on yourself. That really helps. But when you want to go from, you're no longer living in survival and you want to focus on actually thriving and really changing shit, impacting others around you. So we're not talking about surviving here, right? This podcast is about wealth. This isn't about how to, how to pay your bills. This is about generational wealth and unfortunately I see a lot of my brothers and sisters harboring under beliefs like this which sound great at first but upon deeper inspection the shadow side of if it's meant for me it will be is I don't have to try and I have a perfect excuse to not beat myself up over it. But the thing is, is that life will always test you. And we know that. Our creator does it. The universe does it. Life does it. However you want to think about it. And so I just see so many beautiful, beautiful souls so many of you that have applied for the LUC, so many of you that I interact with in the DMs, Telegram, Instagram, in-person events, just, you know, I've really made so many new beautiful connections with so many of you guys in the conscious spiritual space, sovereignty, all that stuff. And it just makes me sad that like, Apparently, everyone unconsciously believes that you can't be an incredible person who's here as a light worker, 
here to help humanity and also be ridiculously wealthy. Apparently, we don't believe that. Just look at your reality to see if you believe that. Because if you did tie being an incredible person to monetary value, you'd have way more money. And it kind of baffles me that so many of us have imprisoned ourselves. Because deep down, I think we all know that we want money. We need money to survive. That's part of this human experience. So I want to wrap things up, but I do want to end with one of the downloads that kind of came kind of came to me the other day. And it kind of came packaged like this. If you only focus on the 3D, you're going to be spiritually dehydrated. And conversely, if you only focus on the 5D, you're going to be materially dehydrated. The goal is to be in the world, but not of the world, right? That's straight from the Bible, but there's many interpretations and many similar notions in different spiritual texts. I interpret this to mean that we've been gifted the keys to the kingdom by our creator. We can have literally whatever we want in this life. So the goal isn't to obsess over material items or overemphasize their importance. That's not at all my message. Having said that, so many of our community members, my peers, my brothers and sisters, people around me in the spiritual spaces have so much spiritual embodiment. It's inspiring. The world needs it. But because they've forsaken the world, right? Just let it all go, ready to move to Tibet. Your or their 3D muscles, if you will, right? In the 3D realm are atrophied, so to speak. And I feel that this is the shadow side that no one wants to talk about bypassing spiritually via spiritual embodiment from a place of trying to forsake the world, trying to avoid the suffering, not have to, not have to accept that you're a human and you're here and you chose this. And so if you don't put any importance on material wealth, your financial state is going to be crippling. You can detach all you want. But you're a human and you're living a human experience. And while we're on earth in the third dimension, we do need money. It's part of this game. We know we live in the matrix. It's a matrix. It's a game. And the currency of this game for the indefinite time period that we're here is money and it just hurts my soul seeing how many of you apply for the LUC and when we ask how much do you have saved to start your investing journey with how many of you put zero dollars I'm living paycheck to paycheck I'm in $30,000 in debt or $300 saved or $500 saved or $700 saved. Parents, people in their 30s, 40s, 50s. It's you're the you're the reason I make episodes like this. 
Please do not take this with shame and guilt. That is not the intention at all. It is more I'm sharing from a place of I'm almost 30. I've been on this journey 10 years now. I wish someone would have told me this in this way, not just told me, but showed me, explained their journey to me, revealed to me my blind spots, made recommendations of what beliefs I should, you know, consider, maybe perspectives I hadn't entertained, maybe a more balanced approach. That would have been priceless for me. And so that's really my, my overall goal with this episode. I'm not trying to trigger anyone. I'm never trying to tell you what you need to believe. If this doesn't resonate, don't worry about it. It's not for you. But I really, really, really feel that I have a responsibility and I owe it to humanity in general, but especially my people, my community, those of you that listen to this, I know a lot of you are highly conscious. A lot of you love humans. You're pro-human. You love the earth. You just want peace. You want love and you want what's just, right? You want equality in the world. And unfortunately, being broke isn't going to help that mission catch across humanity. And that's a big reason why, that's a big motivator, I should say, for me to build wealth. And it has been for a while. Why do I focus so much on it? Because I'm, re- I'm a realist. I'm grounded in reality. So I hope, you know, there are a lot of things that you guys could probably take away from this episode, but I hope that one of the bigger realizations is that you can see yourself in some of these archetypes and identify, am I too far on the toxic masculine trying, always trying to do, do, do and achieve. And I'm never taking the space and the time to tap in to a realm beyond limits where life-changing ideas, opportunities, and abundance comes? Or am I so tapped in all the time that I'm somewhat bypassing this 3D world because I believe it's shitty and I don't want to face the suffering and the grief of my brothers and sisters and I just want to stay in these higher planes? But kind of sitting with yourself and asking, am I, am I bypassing here? What, what good am I doing? Why did I choose to come here if I'm just going to be broke and I'm going to die and not very many people are going to care and minimal impact will have been made? I don't think either of those extremes is what any of us want. I think we all some at some level recognize That alignment and balance in all areas is optimal, if you will. So I'm going to wrap things up there. For those of you who listen the whole way through, you're a real one. I appreciate you. You are who I do this for. Thank you guys so much for for your attention, for your intention. Thank you for listening. Thank you guys for always reviewing Uh, the podcast, giving helpful feedback, sharing it on your stories. Seriously, I appreciate you guys so much. This is why I, you know, continue to do this. I'm really, really trying to get these messages out to more and more people who really need this, uh, especially with everything going on in the world and, you know, financial, a lot of people in absolute financial devastation, and it does not have to be that way. So we're going to wrap things up there and I will see you guys in our next episode. Peace and love.